sunny one nani beautiful people welcome back to my youtube channel if you are new here my name is tenjiwe i am a south african content creator currently based in the uk this video was inspired by my morning walk in this video i want to share with you some of the things that i look back and think were the most stupid craziest decisions i ever made when i first moved to the uk and i am sharing this so that you don't make the same mistake if you still have time to change you can change i was walking in this neighborhood and i'm looking at all the beautiful houses this is my neighborhood and i was asking myself how come i don't have a beautiful house like these ones how come i live here but I live in an apartment because to be honest most of the people who live here I don't think they make that much more money and yes some of them do and also some of them have the advantage of inheritance money that was left for them by their loved ones in most cases by grandparents and so they had a better start in life but to be honest when I look back at my life I think I too could have afforded this if I didn't make these mistakes I'm about to tell you about when I first came to work and live abroad I was quite young I didn't have a solid plan I didn't have any definitive plan I didn't know my exit strategy. I didn't know why I was here other than just being here and working. Well, when I first went to work abroad, I was working in America. And as a result of not having a plan, and because I was young, I didn't have any debts at home. I didn't have any financial commitments. So. I was just spending my money as I wished. So my advice to you would be, if you come here, please have an exit plan. Have a strategy. Know how long you want to stay here for, or if you want to settle here, then it will help you to plan your future better. Uh, it's usually better for people who come here when they've already established themselves at home, maybe they're struggling to pay their bills or their mortgage, then they come here and they know what they are coming here for. They know what they are coming to do. Therefore, it becomes very easy. They know every month I need to put aside this amount of money to pay for ABC at home. But if you come here, with no strategy, no exit plan, you'll find yourself here 20 years later doing exactly how you were doing 20 years ago. Owning nothing, I don't think that's what we want. And that's because that ends up resulting in you not wanting to go back home because you've been here for so long with nothing to show and people at home have improved, they are married, they have children, they have houses, they have good jobs, and they've climbed the ladder in their jobs, they are in management, some are owning their own businesses. So have a solid plan. Have a solid plan, have a definitive plan, know how long you are here for, how much you are here to save and what it is that you want to buy with that money. Having a timeline is very, very important. The second thing I did was I became a self-appointed breadwinner. This happens to a lot of us who come here or to any country abroad from Africa. Please do let me know in the comment section if this happened to you where you come here and suddenly you are the breadwinner. Not just for your immediate family, 
but for everyone, sometimes even for friends. One thing I know now, as before I was born, they were eating at home. When I was a child, they were eating. When I left home, they were eating. So there was no need for me to take all my money and send it to them. And even in that, I still didn't have any strategy of why I was sending them money home. It wasn't, here, this is money, can you do ABC with it? I was basically just giving them money to do as they wish. And I understand that we do have to help out, we do have to help our families, but when we are overseas, for some reason we overdo it. And like Oprah Winfrey says, fill your own cup first. When your own cup is overflowing, then, then you can pour for other people. But what I did was, I was helping people pay for their mortgages when I didn't even have a house of my own. I was helping people pay for their children's school fees, children who had both mothers and fathers. I was helping people with just anything you can think of. And that money was basically wasted because I didn't give it to them as a loan. It was just a matter of, hey, you know, this month, I wouldn't even let someone finish their sentence. Next thing, I've sent them money. And that is a mistake I do not want you to make. Invest in yourself. Think about the future of your own children. And if you want to enable people at home, teach them to fish rather than sending them fish. Another one was opening businesses I had no interest in. I invested in so many businesses with people who had never had a business before, but because I had money and people would say, ah, oh, there's this business idea, I wouldn't even ask much, I will send it, and none of those businesses came into fruition. None of those businesses became a success, and it was my fault, because if you make things so easy for people, they're not going to focus as much as they would have if they had started the business with their hard earned cash. But because everything was just easily given to them, ah, they didn't really pay that much attention. They didn't really work that hard on the businesses. And another one, helping people who didn't ask for my help. This is particularly bringing people over here or applying for them to come over here. And it was a big mistake. A couple of people I brought here didn't even stay for a month because I had paid for everything, paid for their visas, and they didn't even appreciate how expensive these things were. They didn't appreciate how much money you have to spend just on getting their visa status, just on getting them a visa to come here. One of them I did a two-year working holiday visa for. She came here, she said it was boring and cold and went back home within a month. And <laughs> I still had to buy them a ticket to go home because I had brought them here. And it became a big... Uh, problem even at home because you know when you bring your relatives here and then they want to go back and if you don't have the money then their families are thinking you are holding them hostage uh, you are able to bring them here why is it so difficult now to bring them back home if they don't like it here so I had to pay for another ticket for them to go home after paying People who, who live here will appreciate, or people who have tried to get their visas to come here will appreciate the effort and the money involved in getting a two-year working visa. They even had a job by the time they landed at Heathrow. 
they had a job. They said it was too cold and it was boring. Yeah. They were so used to spending their festive season at home where it's nice, where it's fun. Coming here just became too boring for them. They couldn't bear being here with no parties. December, what kind of a December doesn't have parties? So they left. And, and with that being said, be a breadwinner, help your people at home, but no more than you are helping yourself. Don't send the majority of your earnings. Don't send everything. Don't build your brother's house when you don't have a house of your own. Don't even build your mother's house when you don't have a house of your own. Because to be honest, your mother chose to marry a man that was not able to build a house. And she's actually happy with that. You are busy here. You can't even have a relationship because you are working for people who are at home being hugged by their lovers every night and you are wasting your youth working hard here so help out but not more than you are helping yourself when it comes to this be careful even your your own husband or your own wives worst girlfriends and boyfriends there have been so many stories that we know of that can even end up resulting in people going mad or losing their lives. For example, I have two friends who did this thing of living here, doing live-in care, which means you don't even have a bed of your own. You have nothing. All you are doing is working 24 seven. You are just working. You're making good money and you are sending all of it home to your husband. That is exactly what they were doing. And their husbands were building their homes. He's building a house. When I go back home, we're gonna start a family. Oh, he's so scared of coming overseas. Oh, his mother won't allow him. But okay, they did that for a few years. One got deported because she had been here illegally. She got deported. When you get deported, you don't even get to plan or pack your suitcase. So she was sent home with nothing. But it's not bad. She's got a house at home. She'd been showing us the photos that her husband was sending her for the house. When she got there, got to her house, guess who opened the door? A pregnant woman who was about eight or nine months pregnant and had a two-year-old baby. That was the woman her husband was living with. She got so shocked and so stressed. After that, she really didn't last long. She died, unfortunately. And it is so unfortunate that these are things that happen to our people all the time. Another friend of mine, similar thing happened. I don't know which one was worse but she had been here for quite a few years and her husband was also back home. And every time she wanted to go back home, her husband would say, just one more year, we only have a few more things to do to finish up the house. We used to call her husband, Mr. One More Year. Because every time our friend was ready to go home, the husband would say, just one more year. Just stay there one more year. We are almost finished with the house. A house she had not seen, except in photos. A house she was not living in. And here she was living in very unfavorable conditions because she was saving for the house. Oh, there is a bench, let me go and sit. And when my friend eventually decided enough was enough, she wasn't even deported, she decided she's going back home and she's gonna surprise her husband 
he'll just get home and find her there. She went. When she arrived, her husband was getting married. Guys, I know you're going to think I'm exaggerating and I'm making these stories up. People who live abroad, please share your stories of people you know or things that happen to you by living abroad and trusting people at home with your money, whether it was building you a house, uh, paying for your children's education or whatever it was. Please share your stories so that people know I am not making these things up. These things really, really do happen. Please, beautiful people, share your stories. And another dumb mistake that I made when I first moved overseas was to only make friends with people that came from where I came from. That's the stupidest mistake one can make because people who come from where you come from know exactly what you already know and will never teach you anything new. So diversify your friends. Have friends from different places, from different African places, especially for us, because we were like the first group of South Africans to go and live overseas. People who had gone before us had gone because they were either in exile uh, or they had come with uh, performance groups, Sarafina and many other performance groups and they decided not to go back home. Oh, they were there because their parents had been members of religious groups, but we never really got to know each other other than the people that had come to do exactly the same thing that we had come to do on the same visa. That is why we didn't have any information on how to do things properly, how to change your immigration status properly, because we do not make friends with people from other places. So my advice would be, do not just stick to people that come from where you come from. Make friends from people from all sorts of places. Make friends with other Africans. Make friends with people from the country that you have moved to. Because, to be honest, you do not know much. Another mistake is I forgot that I was no longer in my country and I was choosy with jobs. I was very selective. I was like, oh, I don't want to do this job. Don't want to work at weekends. Don't want to work on Sunday. Don't want to work on Saturday. Can't work on Friday night because I wanted to live my youth. I wanted to live my youthful life and do things that I wanted to do. And I forgot that I had come as an expert. Yes, we are experts. We are not foreigners. We are not illegal immigrants. We are also experts just like they are when they come to our shores. So I was here as an expert and I forgot that actually I was not here to party. And I blame that to not having a strategy, to not having an exit plan. Because if you know I'm only going to be here for two years, I want to save this much money and then I'm out of here. It is much, much easier to tell yourself I'm not going to do ABC. I know I'm going to be home in two years. I'll be able to do that. But if you do not even know how long you are there for, you will find yourself doing things that are not only wasting your time, but also wasting your money unnecessary debts. I had debts that I didn't need to have. Like it gets so exciting that you can now have your phone contract, you can have the, any phone that you want, you can have any, like even landline guys. Why do we get into debts just because of landline and then we don't pay them? Going home unnecessarily. When I say unnecessarily, I mean Going home just because you have money, you can buy a ticket or someone's getting married or someone's having a party. Like if you have a strategy, if you have decided, do you live abroad or do you live at home? If you've told yourself that I live abroad, you do not worry about things that you are missing out at home because people will live their lives. People will have weddings, people will have parties, people will have graduations. And every time someone has something, you don't have to spend your money by going home. And it all goes back to having a strategy, to having an exit plan. Because you will have your things here. No one from home is gonna take a flight to come and celebrate your graduation. Nobody from home is gonna take uh, their money, buy a ticket to come here and celebrate even your wedding, even your childbirth. Like, I've gone home for baby showers. Even the father of the baby who lived next door did not turn up and I flew all the way from overseas. Why did I do that to myself? It was just so unnecessary 
I didn't have to do it. I could have saved that money, but I did it because I did not have a sense of belonging. I did not know where exactly I lived. If I had known that I lived here, make friends here, tell them to get pregnant so that you can attend their baby showers. You don't need to go home to attend baby showers. You don't need to go home to attend anything, to be honest. That's money you could say. You know a house where a South African lives just by the amount of boxes that are in the house ready to be shipped home. And guys, it's not cheap. It is very expensive to ship these things home, but because there's something about 80% off that makes us go crazy. Even if it's not your size, you're like, someone at home's gonna like it. Someone at home's gonna want it. Someone at home's gonna need it. Like, there's something about 60% off that makes you believe this thing has to be bought and it has to be bought by me and it has to be bought now. Yeah, guys, sometimes we even buy rubbish from charity shops, like charity shops. Like, yes, it was nice. In 1984, why are you buying it and sending it home? It was nice. That's why they put it in a charity shop because it was nice in 1985. Even Nelson Mandela would not wear it. That's one thing I have stopped and I hope even when the shops reopen, I will not be doing it, of buying things just because they are on sale and buying things to send home. Because not only do you spend money buying those things even if they are on sale, but you are also spending a lot of money sending it. You're spending a lot of money sending it. Sometimes you're spending a thousand pounds just sending rubbish home. Imagine if you send that thousand pounds, put it in your bank account at home and just let it sit there until you come back. And sometimes they are afraid to tell you at home that please stop sending this rubbish because they think you will be offended and also you will stop sending them the money. But believe you me, they can do without the rubbish that we keep sending them. I even know someone who sent coat hangers, like boxes of plastic coat hangers from the shop that was closing down. They were throwing away coat hangers. She took all of them for free, yes, put them in boxes and she paid 600 pounds which is about 12,000 rands, sending them home. I know I've said a lot in this video, but my message is, please have a plan, have an exit plan, have a definitive plan. Even if you've already been here for a few years, you can still change things, you can still do this. How long are you here for? What is it that you want to achieve from being here? Are you here because you want to move here permanently? If that's the case, make sure the priority is to sort out your immigration status. If your plan is to be here long term or permanently, sort out your immigration status. There are many ways of doing it. There are so many ways of doing it. Don't even send money home until you are sorted. Fill your own cup. And then when it's overflowing, you'll be free to send everyone everything and anything that they need. Stop being a self-appointed breadwinner. Before you send anybody any amount of money home, make sure you have put an equal amount into your own savings account. If someone asks you to send them 50 pounds, don't send them your last 50 pounds. Don't take your 50 pounds from a credit card or an overdraft to send to them. Make sure you have 100 pounds and you're gonna take 50, put it in your savings account and then you can give them the 50. Do not give people what you do not have yourself because it will end up making you such a, a hateful person because you will think you are being used and people do not owe you anything and nobody is using you. You make a choice to give people what you do not have and people assume you are giving them 50 pounds because you have 5,000 pounds. Nobody thinks you're gonna give them your last money. That's not how things should happen. You shouldn't give people your last 50 pounds. Why are you doing that to yourself? Tay, why did I do that to myself? Oh well, I've learned now. It's not gonna happen again. And I really hope it doesn't have to happen to you. And that is it for this video, guys. So with this video, all I want to say is, let us do things right and let us share the mistakes we've made so that nobody else has to go through the same thing. It is possible to achieve everything here, but you need a strategy plan. 
you cannot live two lives with one salary and you cannot help everybody back home you cannot even the leaders that they are voting for that they are electing to represent them cannot afford to help all of them so who do you think you are if you think you can do that you cannot thank you so much for watching this video please do not forget to subscribe press the notification button so that you do not miss another video and please do leave me a comment down below sharing your experiences and giving me some advice what can i do what have you done that has made things work for you how wh what can we do